much for speaking to us this morning on the Light Breakfast. How are you doing? I'm good. Thank you for having me. How are you guys? We're okay. We're working yeah. from home. Um, MCOing. Yeah. <laughs> Same here. MCOing. From so home. your center is not uh, not open at this moment. It's not considered no, essential. Yeah, we can't actually because we do one to one intervention. Um, and we work with children, so it's a bit too risky, um, you know, uh, going into work at this point. Mm -hmm. um, so we're all taking a break for now. Okay. Well, you have 11 years of experience managing children with um, autism or in the autism spectrum. Now, in your opinion, how difficult is it to manage them even when they're allowed to go out and just enjoy being children, you know? Yeah, so I would say that's a tricky question. So firstly, I would say all of us are coping in our own way, regardless whether we have autism mm -hmm. or we are neurotypical individuals. I mean, I'm still trying to cope even though it's day 31. Um, for our children or individuals with autism, autism is a spectrum disorder. So we have, you know, individuals that are mild, moderate and severe. And of course, depending on how much they understand and, and uh, generally their behavior repertoire, they will uh, cope differently. Mm. So uh, many of our children in ABC, I, I believe also because of the intervention they've been receiving and because the parents are trained, uh, they're actually coping so well and they're so happy. And, you know, parents are sending us videos of them, you know, just really enjoying this break. It's a holiday for them as well uh, because, you know, therapy is hard work for yeah. them. Uh, however, on the flip side, uh, I do know there are some families and some individuals on the spectrum that are really struggling. Uh, they don't quite understand the new social rules that has been put into place. Like, you know, prior to this, taking a walk in the park is completely fine. Yeah. And now you could be get, you can be thrown into jail. So um, it's very hard for them to understand, I would say. So I would say it's a very big uh, difference uh, depending on how how severe or how affected the individual is, how much they understand, how much the family can cope, you know, and support them. So I would say, you know, it, it can either be going really well uh, or good, or it could be the flip side. I mean, some families can be really struggling at this point. Yeah, I mean, for any child with autism, like whether or not they're mild or uh, severe, having a routine is extremely important, right? So what do you say to them to explain to them about this MCO, this movement control order? Do we have to oh. rewrite their routine, you know? Well, it really depends again. So, you know, this topic is so interesting just because, again, autism is a spectrum. So I would say, yes, having a routine for everybody is actually great because it helps us kind of see what's happening next, you know, how are you going to prepare yourself physically, mentally, psychologically for it. And this goes for individuals on the spectrum as well. Uh, I would say now in terms when we need to explain, um, again, it comes, about, it, come back, it comes back to how much the individual understands. So I'm sure you're aware that uh, one of the biggest deficits in autism is the language deficit. Mm. So they may not understand rules. They may not understand when you speak in sentences. So I would say for you know, a, a majority of the individuals that are still learning to understand and to communicate, um, honestly, it's very difficult to explain such a, an abstract uh, event happening right now because it's yeah. not really concrete like how do you explain a virus something that you can't see you know mm. um, individuals with autism do struggle with these things uh, even for example um, socialization is very challenging because it's not a concrete uh, object that you can touch it's actually a concept and an yeah. idea so I would say so if this individual is high functioning they have language and they can communicate like you and I you know, you could uh, tell them, uh, explain, I would say in minimal words, uh, as simple as possible. Why? Because most individuals on the, the spectrum, especially in the beginning, they do have a lot of language deficits mm -hmm. to explain what are the new rules uh, and all of the fun things that you can do at home. Okay. So I wouldn't actually really focus on all the things they can't do. Um, and um, depending on how much the, the child understands or the individual understands, I, I actually wouldn't harp too much on the virus. Because, I mean, 
I have a two-year-old niece and I can't explain to her what a virus is and she's neurotypical, you yeah. know, and yeah. many of our children are two and three-year-old and they have autism. I mean, there's no way they're going to understand such an abstract concept. So mm-hmm. I would say, coming back to your qu- uh, question, um, if there is a way for us to explain, depending on how much the child can understand, mm-hmm. I would say would just probably list down or have a lot of visuals and options of all the fun things that you can do with daddy and mommy, which is usually I would say it's a bonus because most families are working families, you know, and now this is like a yay, mom, mom and dad is home as well. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I would say more of giving them uh, Oops. Time for them. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, just kind of maybe if anything, giving a choice board. So a board with many, many pictures of all the fun things they could do. Mm. I mean, as parent of, like you said, neurotypical children, it's already very tiring to have to work from home, take care of the children, take care of the food, you know, make sure they're clothed and fed. I'm sure parents with uh, special children, like autistic children, have it even more difficult at this time, don't they? Yeah, absolutely. And I think just like you said, I mean, I mean, all of us, most of us are working from home and uh, now there's no school. So now you are a mother and for our families, they become a teacher slash therapist. So uh, you become a, I was uh, speaking to one of our parents. She was like, Charlene, I'm the chef. I am the therapist. (laughs) I am the cleaner. I am the mother. And I'm like, yeah, you're absolutely right. Uh, so I would say to parents, though, I mean, I, I have a list of things that you could try at home, but I think we kind of need to be really realistic here that these are just unprecedented times mm. and just cope in um, any manner that you can. Actually, I, I believe we're just coping. If you could thrive, that's great. But, you know, uh, this change, I mean, we're, we're one month into it. I don't expect parents to suddenly juggle everything uh, at one go, even though you have a neurotypical child, I would say that yeah. I think parents are feeling how, how it's not easy, you know, uh, even more so with our children on the spectrum when they have language deficits, there are a lot of rigidities, you know, they have behaviors because they can't express themselves, probably more tantrums, behaviors because they don't get to do what they usually do, mm. you know, they can't leave the door, you know, and uh, many of our children have repetitive behaviors. So I'm not surprised if they would say things like, you know, go to ABC, go to ABC or go, go out, go out, you know, and they can't explain, uh, you know, they can't understand why, you know, so I, I would say uh, cope in whatever way you can. Um, in terms of uh, behavior management perspective, I would say it's for families, it's constant redirection. So redirection basically uh, means when you have a behavior Uh, you redirect them to something neutral, uh, basically taking their mind off it and say, okay, like distraction, isn't it? Exactly. Why don't let's read a book? But uh, in terms of behavior management, we have to be really careful because we don't want to distract a negative behavior with a reinforcing item. Mm. Because the child, I mean, this is a whole topic on another, (laughs) another, uh, you know, uh, talk. But basically, I mean, if you're trying to cope, if, you're constantly pairing a negative behavior with a favorable response, the child is just going to learn, hey, if I throw a tantrum, mommy's going to take out the iPad, you know? Mm, so, right. um, I mean, my, my tip would be redirection <clears throat> to a neutral item. When the child comes down, give them the, the best thing ever. Or every time you, ch- uh, you catch a child doing something good, make a, a big effort to reinforce that. Like, wow, you're sitting so nicely. I love how you're sharing the book with your sister. You know, I love how you're using your words. I know this could be very odd to a lot of parents, but um, actually behavior management uh, is universal. It's not just for children with autism. It's all of us, actually. Yeah, Um, and I mean, I as a parent, I understand what you're saying. Like, you know, reward only good behaviors, not the ones that will uh, make them throw a tantrum more, you know, because Correct. it's not that, Correct. oh, I throw a tantrum, I get this, you know. Yeah, it exactly. works for everybody, I think. Like, <laughs> Bell, but, but, Bell does that to me all the time anyway. So, <laughs> oh, JD, you're doing so well. Good for you. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Even adults, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah. But it's not easy, you know, because now I would say I, I'm very sure screen time is through the roof right now. It's just the easiest way to manage. And honestly, I would have to say I understand, uh, you know, from needing to, you know, having that, three to six to eight hours a day that you can go to work and 
focus on that and your children go to school and now you have none of that. So you have to find a way to, you know, manage that time and manage your child. Mm. So also I, I would say that, you know, completely understandable. Do, do whatever you think uh, you can manage at this time. Are any of your children doing any like online therapy classes at this moment? Okay, so we call it online supervision. The answer is yes. However, not all families opt for this. Uh, again, completely understandable because that means they need to take time out of their day and set up a, you know, a Skype session. So basically, the difference between online therapy and online supervision is many of our children are relatively quite young. A majority of the children in ABC are between the ages of two to four. Most of them cannot sit long enough in front of a computer screen to take instructions from us. And because of the nature of the diagnosis autism, many of them have challenges taking instructions. They have challenges with attention. So what we do instead is um, ABC actually uses a technology in teaching. It's called Patan Technology. It's based on a technology in Pennsylvania. So that because of that, we have been spending the last uh, two years training parents. Uh, that means most of our parents are actually equipped to run therapy at home. So oh. what we have done instead is we are supervising parents through the screen. Like, okay, let's run through what uh, the homework was yesterday. Okay, could I have a look? And then they try, okay, great, you're doing a good job. Okay, now, for example, let's add a new target. So we are kind of supporting parents through our online supervision. But uh, there are two or three kids that we can actually have a conversation with them because they're high functioning. So for those children, some sort of intervention can be done through the screen because they have the attention, they have the language repertoire. But I would say a majority of our children can't uh, do online uh, intervention. Uh, they call it telehealth uh, or telemed. Uh, it's just, um, it could work for, for example, if you're an adult and you need counseling sessions. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, uh, like exact, yeah, yeah, exactly. Because we all have the attention. Uh, we right. can communicate virtually through a screen, but many of our children, um, they struggle with that. And also the core of um, what we do, applied behavior analysis, the core of it is motivation and reinforcement. Mm -hmm. So every time the child does something right, especially in the beginning, we, they do get a tangible. How do you deliver that <laughs> through a screen, you know? Yeah. So it, there's a lot of, uh, I would say there's a lot of uh, jobs that we have come to realize that it's so dependent on that one-to-one -one -one interaction. Exactly. Yeah. yeah, it's just quite difficult virtually. So, I mean, some of the parents have been coping exceptionally well. Uh, we have been supervising them uh, via Skype sessions. Mm -hmm. uh, some of them have decided to take a break. Uh, I wouldn't even say a break. I think they're just coping. <laughs> they're coping with the household, you know. Yeah. I don't really think it's a holiday as well. But either way, um, yeah, that's how we're doing it right now. Not so okay. much with uh, online therapy. But how about parents out there who, you know, who's never gone through any training and they do have an autistic child at home? What can they do to help their child cope with the changes that comes with this MCO? Okay. All right. So I would say uh, now again, let's, let's talk about uh, a family that has never received uh, intervention. So basically a very different uh, setup from our parents in ABC. So I would say like for, um, uh, for parents that have never brought their child for, for intervention or they've been doing very minimal intervention, um, I would say setting a routine um, is very important. Uh, but also you see the tricky part is if you are so rigid with the routine, it also can backfire on you. So I would say set a routine but allow some flexibility. Okay. Um, there is a protocol called uh, interruption transition. I know it sounds so clinical, but basically it just means what parents can start doing at home. Uh, it's not the first thing we work on, but it will help with transitions is getting your child to you interrupt, you interrupt your child and you transition them. So usually how we start this is we interrupt them doing something really boring or neutral, something they don't like. And we would usually say something like, come here. And we have something really, really amazing in our hand. Something they would happily leave that boring activity for. So for example, say maybe uh, your child is uh, engaging with some sort of scribbling 
or, or drawing or coloring where they don't really particularly love it. Mm. So how we would do it is we will tell a child, uh, maybe we have uh, ice cream, something really amazing that they like. We'll just say, come here. The moment they take one step to us, we would reinforce them straight away with ice cream. So there's a whole protocol for this, actually. Uh, that's not the only thing. You, it might sound like, wow, okay, really? <laughs> that sounds like training like a, an animal. But not really, actually. It's called interruption. You interrupt and you transition. And then we, st and we start with that. And then we move on to interrupting favorable items with neutral uh, transitions. But to start... Um, I mean, again, I'm going, I'm, I might be getting a bit too clinical, but to start with, the reason why I would recommend that is changes are bound to happen. And I think hopefully this event kind of hopefully opens our eyes to we can prepare um, our children as much as we can. But there are some things that, uh, that are just, uh, uh, you know, more than what we can prepare them for. And what we actually, on top of, I understand having a routine is very important. But if you ask me, what's more important is flexibility. Mm. Yeah, because I mean, they are having a routine, but allowing flexibility is really important. But coming back to that, that's how we start. Yeah. And then, then the child learns to transition. We interrupt any behavior and they transition seamlessly. No behaviors. I mean, you should see how our, our parents do it with our kids. It's like their therapist. It's amazing. <laughs> and I think also because of that, uh, a lot of our children have been coping so well. Okay. So instead so of So practice you, this interruption transition so that they can cope with change. Changes. Is that what Correct. you're saying? Okay. Um, I do want to share a resource that's available right now right now for free. It's not from ABC. Hmm. It's actually uh, an international um, sort of platform. Um, the a website if you don't mind me sharing, it's yep. called VB Verbal Behavior V V for Vine B for Boy. Mm -hmm. M A P P, so Malaysia, Auckland, Poland, Poland, mm -hmm. app A P P, so it's Auckland, Poland, Poland, so it's vbmapapp.com. So right now they're actually doing a free course on exactly what I just spoke the one on ones on behavior analysis, the one on one on teaching your child language, teaching behavior, teaching transition, and it's completely free. Mm. Yeah, and it's usually paid for, but because uh, this is um, uh, the BB map is actually an assessment that we use that teaches language, teaches uh, managing behavior, interruption, transition protocol that I just man uh, mentioned. This was not developed by us uh, because what we do is a science. So um, parents now can uh, get their hands on this information for free. It's a total of eight hours worth of videos and tests. I did it myself. I just completed it. It was a really good refresher for me. But I would say anybody interested in, uh, if you have a child with autism, special needs, or your teacher, or your parent, or you're just interested in, you know, how do you teach language? How do you teach behavior? I mean, uh, I would say do register on bbmapapp.com. Um, it is free, I believe, till the end of the month. I don't know if they're extending it because they first made it free because of the MCO. So that everybody's at home, at least they can get some free training and parents can grasp these concepts and practice them at home. Uh, but I would say, you know, because I mean, of the limit, limited time, and this is not really a training uh, 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 platform, I would say if parents are interested with what I just said of this interruption uh, transition, just uh, go on to vbmapapp.com and they'll get a full eight hour training that will really, really help them. Nice. Yeah, but coming back to your question, I mean, the routine is great, but I would say for families, just including your child in anything you do, uh, besides work, I would say it's a little bit difficult. Like maybe cooking, you know, getting them to chop up certain things or putting it into the pan, you know, again, I mean, let's look at safety hazards, but whatever, whatever your child can participate in, if you're baking a cake, you know, you can get them to mix, you know, uh, help them make breakfast, help do the laundry. Yeah. Uh, because life skills just for our kids, uh, for individuals with autism is also very important mm. uh, because the end goal is always for uh, independence. Yeah. So this I mean, this is what we, we, tr we do with our children anyways, the neurotypical children. Exactly. So can we, at this, at this moment, treat autistic children as normal children and just go with the flow, you know? 
I, I mean, I, I would say why not, you know? Yeah. Uh, I mean, uh, go with the flow, I would say. I mean, do whatever you can. How, I mean, it's better than leaving your child on, on their own with their own devices because the thing with uh, individuals with autism, they usually would um, engage in behaviours called self-stimulatory behaviours. Okay. It is repetitive behaviours when they are bored, when they are idle, and when some children, when they're really happy and excited. So you may see behaviours like this. They will flap their hands. They will go, ah, just rep- repetitive behaviours. Or, you know, uh, they may line things up. They may collect long objects. So for children that are not engaged in, in any activity, their whole day, at least their waking time, may look like that. They may be pacing back and forth. They may be rocking flapping their hands while they watch TV because it's really exciting, you know. So they usually children with lack of skills. And when uh, they are idle, uh, we see them engaging a lot on these behaviors. This is mm. part of the stereotypical behavior uh, with individuals with autism. Of course, when we're doing therapy or when you're engaging your child, you see less of this mm. because they are engaged. But when you leave them uh, for, you know, long durations of time and for some of our kids, even if you leave them for a few seconds, they would go back to that behavior. Oh, wow. Yeah, so okay. it's called self stimulatory behavior or in short, it's called stimming. So okay. I would say for families that are trying to cope, I would say just try to engage them to the best that you can because I know many parents are working as well. Yeah. Well, I'm very lax with screen time with my children at this moment. I, I think <laughs> like everyone- Whenever they want to watch TV, they want to go on the tablet, go ahead. Like, I have no strength I mean, at this moment. But like, I mean, how about screen time for children with autism? Is it uh, allowed or, or will it make them steam even more? You know? Yeah, so I would say everything in moderation is fine. However, the data that we have today already indicates that excessive screen time does uh, contribute to delay in speech and communication. Mm -hmm. That's what we already know. So this is not just for children with autism. This is just for children in general. And that is why uh, I'm not sure if you have realized that there are a lot of typical children right now that are speaking later than usual. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, uh, and uh, many children now, it's becoming a norm for children to go for speech therapy. You know, when before this, uh, it used to be children with uh, autism, you know, children uh, with uh, developmental delays that would go for this. But uh, now I'm actually seeing some children that come through, you know, when we assess them, um, they're hitting all their milestones. They understand so much, but, you know, it's sometimes just a speech delay. But one of the factors that can contribute to the speech delay is excessive screen time. Now, again, I would say if MCO is just happening for one, two months, um, I wouldn't say it's the end of the world, but I would say some some control is good. Um, And uh, for parents, I would say use the reinforcing items. It could be TV, it could be iPad, it could be your phone, anything that the child likes as a reward for doing something that you need them to do. Mm. Um, the tricky part is when it, it comes for free. Yeah, because that means, you know, when, for example, our children, if, um, you know, most of this MCO is day 31 today, if, if they've had the iPad for free for the last 31 days, and then say tomorrow if we had to go back for, for therapy, none of them will work actually because they know they're going to get this for free or they have gotten it for free in the past. Why do I have to work so hard right now to use my words? Mm. So it's really tricky. I would say that, uh, I mean, why not? Everything in moderation is fine. Uh, But I would say if you really need to absolutely use it, use it once you have engaged your child and you use it as reinforcement. Like, okay, guys, you know, first bake, let's bake a cake and then we can watch TV. Mm. You know, so you get the family time. Exactly, yeah. At at least you have some control. And there is some sort of demand and some activity that's been put in place first. Because yeah. you're worried about weaning them off it after. Absolutely. And that's again, that's what we call interruption transition. It's a nightmare right. actually because now you are interrupting them from the most powerful item. And you have and nothing I, even stronger than that. 
You're right. And that's why the I do, I do. I have chocolates. <laughs> ah, okay. You're lucky, you're lucky. Oh my for God. many for you know, like you 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 switch off that iPad right now, I give you chocolate. And okay. <laughs> <laughs> you're lucky. You're lucky because for many, for many people, uh children, uh, adults even. Um, you know, your gadgets are the strongest thing, you know? True. So, um, and that's why, I mean, coming back to the foundation just now, interruption transition never starts with their favorite item. We want them to know that transitioning is fun, is good. Good things come to me, you know? Mm. But now, if you want to start this protocol when your child is holding on to their iPad, and if it is the most powerful and favorite thing they have, it is going to be a disaster. I mean, even for our kids, uh, iPad is finished, time to go to school. Oh no, it will be, <laughs> it will be a disaster, you know? So yeah. I would say everything in moderation is... Yeah, that's fine. what I'm afraid of as well. Like after a whole month of having parents at home, you know, doing, doing everything together and then suddenly they have to go back to school, that would be a, a difficult transition as well. Even for, for neurotypical children, Correct. let alone uh, autistic children. Yeah. But you see, the biggest difference, right, for individuals with autism in general is the lack of uh, reinforcement from socialization. They, many of them don't see socialization as very rewarding. Ah. So, uh, and that's why there's a big social deficit. Uh, however, for neurotypical uh, individuals, most of us, I mean, even me, I cannot wait to go back to work because I would like to see other people. Yeah. And Same with my, my, older, my older daughter. It's like, I want to go back and play with my friends and all exactly. that, right? In so school. you see, there's, the, there's a social aspect. So I would say, yes, the transition is going to be challenging, but I would say for neurotypical uh, individuals, it's, I think it's going to be a little bit more better than our kids. Uh, unless, again, uh, unless the child has a lot of interest in ABC, they really value peers and other people uh, strongly, then yes, they're going to look forward to going back to school or going back to therapy. However, if the, your reward or value system is not other people, you're not going to look forward to it. Mm. Yeah, so that's the biggest difference, I would say. And that's why autism is such a big thing, because what naturally comes to, uh, naturally to us, uh, the yearning to socialize, mm -hmm needs to almost be taught to our children okay. on the spectrum. Okay. So how can um, family, besides parents, right? You have other family members as well, siblings, grandpa, grandma. How can family members help parents or help children with um, autism, especially during this, this uh, stressful time? Yeah, I would say keep, keep them occupied. Like if everybody, honestly, if everybody takes a turn, like if you have a son... Uh, who can play with, you know, your child on the spectrum for a bit and then grandpa takes over and then grandma takes over. Everybody, you know, has a role. And generally, individuals uh, on the spectrum like to move as well, you know, if you could have some sort of obstacle course within your house. But I would say it's almost like a tag system here. There's no way everybody can do it together mm. at one time. Yep. Uh, the only way you can sustain and you want to make the most out of this time if it's everybody kind of... Uh, gives in a hand and they take turns uh, it's not easy I would say again because I think most uh, children again if they're uh, because autism is such a big spectrum so it's hard to, to generalize but if the child has very minimal language very minimal skills you you have a lot on your hands actually uh, you know because sometimes even engaging in play which sounds so simple to us um, actually most of our children need to be taught to play yeah, um, many of them, for example, if you give them blocks, they wouldn't know what to do with it. They will play inappropriately. Mm -hmm. If you give them sand, you know, they may put it into their mouth. You know, if they give them color pencils instead of coloring, they collect them all and they just hold on to it, you know. So I would say if anything, if your child has very limited skills or you have not engaged in any sort of therapy, I would say just play with your child. Mm -hmm. uh, keep it short and sweet and very simple, age appropriate you know, work on skills like, you know, imitation. So you model first, like, and, and use very simple language, like pour the sand. And then, you know, you can support your child to pour the sand, you know, let's mix, 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 you know, and then, uh, you know, let's match the puzzle. Very simple language. Um, usually when we're teaching play with children, we refrain from any other demands like questions so, for example, if I'm playing a kinetic sand with a child, 
you know, I would go press, you know, put in, you know, do this. And then they would follow me. I wouldn't say things like, what color is this? What am I doing? Oh, wow. You know, what are you doing? You know, because most of our children just lack the language skills and all of that is just, honestly, it's just white sound to them, you know, white, not white noise. They wouldn't understand. So just try to keep language simple, model and get them to try. If your child can't imitate, you, uh, it's called a physical prom. Just physically take their hand and show them what you need to do. Keep it very short, very simple. A lot of children on the spectrum love sensory play. So what, playing with water, playing with bubbles, play-doh, uh, sand, you know, messy play. However, on the other side, there are also some that are completely terrified of all of those. <laughs> so, uh, I mean, you really have to have a look. But I, I would say as a family, a whole family unit, especially it's a whole nuclear family, if everybody could just uh, take turns uh, supporting. Um, but honestly, I would say, I mean, just give yourself a break. It's 24 hours in the day. I can't expect everybody to, you know, be doing this the whole day. I mean, what we advise our parents, actually, if you could just spend 30 minutes a day, and in the beginning, I mean, we started off with just 10 minutes, then 15, then slowly work your way up. If you can spend 30 to 60 minutes a day doing something meaning, meaningful and productive with your child, I would say that is more than enough. You know, uh, I mean, it sounds a, a very small part of the day that you're taking, but actually, it, it's not easy for many of our families. 30 minutes or 60 minutes a day is asking a lot, actually. And I would say I, I would say a lot of families would agree to that as well. And it keeps them uh, connected with all the exercises that they've been doing because, I mean, it's been a few months now. How detrimental was the MCO to their development if, you, if they didn't have all these exercises at home? Exactly. I would, I mean, uh, I'll be very honest with you. Um, I, I have a feeling that MCO is going to be extended. Oh, no, no. Yeah, Don't I say have, that. No, no, that's what, that's what, that's what. Right. <laughs> okay, I have a wooden table. I'm touching it. But I have, I have the feeling, but you know, um, and that's why it's so important that families continue this work. I mean, regression uh, of skills, we call it regression of skills. I think it's going to happen. Uh, but uh, what we can do is minimize that regression. Yeah, I mean, right. I really think it's going to happen. I, I would say even with everyone else, you know, if you're studying... Yeah you know, six to eight hours a day and suddenly you are homeschooling and you can do whatever you want. I, I don't know how much uh, a, a lot of the children are getting out of this actually. Yeah, I've lost all my social skills. I never want to go out ever again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, now, that we, like, now that we know we can do it like this, right? Why? Why? Yeah. Go, drive? That's true. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> I mean, I, mean, I mean, it's really lucky for some jobs, it, I feel it works better. But I, I don't know. I feel with the work from home thingy, there's, uh, I mean, you have to be very disciplined to put an end to work. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm also trying to stop myself from it because sometimes I catch myself texting, you know, uh, my therapist. And I'm like, oh my God, it's not even working hours anymore. But you know, you're kind of constantly working. And I think Yeah, because how... work and life has been jumbled into one. Yeah. There's exactly. no separation anymore. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. That's why when they say it's work, when they want to look for work-life balance, the only person that doesn't have that is a wife because work and life put together is wife. You are so right. Oh. Right? Yeah. You're right. Wow. Actually. I <laughs> There's I so read that many, somewhere. Yeah. Yeah, there are so many articles coming up right now about how you know different people are appreciating different professions and their yeah. wives and their moms because it's just not easy. Like everybody's kind of doing uh, all of the jobs, you know. Uh, it's just not easy. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you so much, Charlene. That was really truly an eye opener, and like we hope that all your children are are okay during this period of MCO and when they come back to to your center they'll be they'll be much more improved maybe yeah yes i really hope so i i have to i mean if our parents are listening i would have to say uh, parents please keep it up uh, i know it's not easy uh, some of our parents really has have been having a really difficult time um, it's emotionally uh, difficult for them, you know, psychologically difficult and you have to now manage your child for the whole day. But I would say, you know, if you could do this, you can do this, you can do anything. So I would say just rough it out. I think we have each other's backs and I really can't wait for MCO to be over so we can all sort of go back to our normal lives. The new norm, yeah. The new, the new norm. norm, yeah. There's not really going to be a norm normal anymore, no. but you know, whatever closest to norm 